Well, we've ploughed through quite a few parts of this list, frantically trying to highlight some of horror cinema's most underappreciated or undiscovered entries that defiantly make up the best of the best. There's nothing quite like realising a horror gem has passed you by and then getting the opportunity to rediscover it. And thankfully for us, there's a boatload full of great little horror movies that never got the opportunity that they truly deserved in the spotlight. But also thankfully for us, we're going to take a look at some. So. Let's begin. Hello horror fans, what's going on and once again welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, as today we take a look at the top 5 scariest horror movies that you may have missed. Part 3, roll the clip. amongst you that was from 2006's Behind the Mask The Rise of Leslie Vernon which would have made this list if not for the fact that it probably got a little more time in the spotlight than the majority of entries on this part 3. Nevertheless it's a great subversive little horror film and if you haven't seen it you probably should. Kicking off at number 5 The Black Coach Daughter 2017. And if you're ready for a fresh, innovative and original approach to the somewhat beaten horse of the demonic horror genre, you should definitely take a look at 2017's The Black Coat's Daughter, a psychological thriller that seems simple to begin with but slowly unravels in a cacophony of demonic possession that is one part The Exorcist to two parts Halloween, which is a pretty good selling point, right? Written and directed by Oz Perkins, who was also the man responsible for 2016's I Am The Pretty Thing That Lives In The House, which is also definitely worth a watch, but The Black Coat's Daughter takes the cake. This film is as atmospheric atmospheric as it gets and it uses sound design in a manner reminiscent of a John Carpenter classic which is high praise. It stars Emma Roberts and Kiernan Shipka as Rose and Kat, two teenagers who attend a prestigious Catholic boarding school in upstate New York who are waiting to be picked up by their parents before summer break. Also it's probably important to note that they're incredibly suspicious of the nuns that chaperone the school and by suspicious I mean that they're pretty convinced that they're worshipping a demon. Yeah, we know how this film goes, right? Now, this film doesn't necessarily break boundaries in terms of narrative, but what lengths it does go to to shake up the genre, it does very well. Don't try and second guess any part of this movie because it's not what you think, and that's reason enough to give it a watch. Next up at number four, Dead End 2003. And I'm not going to lie, this film is absolutely insane. As in, it's not a horror experience like any other, and because of that, it won't be for everyone. It's hilarious, it's weird, it's definitely not what you expect, and it's also consistently horrifying throughout. Dead End is like if David Lynch was hired to make Wrong Turn, but then actually made the Australian early 80s thriller Road Games. Yeah, and that's probably on 50% of the idea because you can't exactly put your finger on this film. Written and directed by Jean-Baptiste Andrea, a pretty obscure French filmmaker who also produced the surprisingly brilliant Big Nothing, starring Simon Pegg and David Schwimmer, of all people. On Andrea's film history pretty much sums up how off the wall Dead End actually is. It tells the tale of the Harrington family headed by a man named Frank, played by Ray Wise, who are driving on their annual Christmas Eve trip to their grandmother's house, who decide this year to take a never before seen shortcut to shake things up a bit. And then the wheels come off and this film descends into a horror show of strangely epic proportions. Honestly, this film needs to be seen to be believed because nothing that I say can really do it justice. You'll either absolutely love it or you'll hate it and it's definitely worth a watch for that reason. Swinging in at number three, Dead Birds, 2004. Okay, now many of you fervently called for this one to appear on part two of our list, and actually, you were all pretty much spot on. Dead Birds is an unexpected horror diamond in the rough, and for a straight-to-DVD B-movie that never really intended to shake things up in the world of cinema, it was a much-needed throwback to the horror classics that we all need to be reminded of. Listen, this film is slow, like really, really slow, and if you're expecting a high-octane horror slasher, you're not going to get it. But much like with many Hammer horror classics, as well as the plethora of black and white killer thrillers of the early 60s, it's in the drawn-out pace of Dead Birds where the horror truly lurks, and it comes with a fantastic delivery. Directed by first-time filmmaker Alex Turner and written by Simon Barrett, an incredibly talented screenwriter attached to the likes of 2011's Your Next and 2014's The Guest, Dead Birds thankfully thrives on its title 
point narrative and because of that its pacing is what carries us into the dark depths of its horror story in a classic haunted house fashion. Dead Birds tells the story of a group of confederate soldiers during the American Civil War who go on the run after robbing a bank and deserting the war effort where they seek shelter in an old abandoned mysterious plantation. But of course we know that something terrifying lurks inside. Also this film is surprisingly stacked with some great acting talent, Michael Shannon deserving an honourable mention as well as Henry Thomas as in yes the kid from E.T. Trust me this one's worth a watch. Coming in at number 2, Piwakit 2017. And I think for one, for those of you that haven't yet seen Powacket, top 5 scary fans in particular will find a lot to be enjoyed in this horror flick. Mainly black magic summoning rituals, strange creepy folklore and of course demonic possession. It ticks all the boxes guys. And even better. It's Canadian. Written and directed by Adam McDonald, the man responsible for the terrifying wilderness survival horror Backcountry, which is also worth a watch, Powakit tells the tale of a young girl named Leah who has an odd fascination with black magic and the occult and whose curiosity soon happens to get the better of her. We all know how this story goes, right? But what soon seems like a straight up don't do black magic kids cautionary tale, Powakit actually has a lot more to offer than most demonic cookie cutter horrors. It's patient in its delivery and it often leaves enough atmospheric tension for the true weight of Leah's actions to sink in, while also being legitimately scary on a few key occasions. It's dripping with dread in both ancient and contemporary instances, and it's a modern horror gothic fairy tale that definitely needs to be added to any horror fan's repertoire. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, Gonjiam Haunted Asylum 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, listen, this film is awesome and I had to be incredibly specific on showing you the right balance of clips to not spoil anything for this movie because let me tell you, it is an experience. Gonjiam is simple in its approach and in essence it's technically nothing new. It's a found footage horror, it's got a stereotypical abandoned mental asylum with an equally unnerving backstory but it's in the execution of this film where it truly earns the recognition that it deserves because it's also really, really scary and a horror experience that at the very, very least, even for the most seasoned horror fans, will have you checking yourself the next time you walk down a dark corridor. Written and directed by South Korean writer and director Jung Bum Shik, this film definitely wasn't overlooked in its native country, but never really made any waves with a western audience, perhaps because it was packaged as a less traditional horror narrative as expected. However, it needs to be seen. It tells the tale of a Korean horror YouTuber who explores Gonjian Mental Asylum, a very real place in Korea that's been voted time and time again one of the scariest places on the planet, as him and a group of his friends hold a live stream with the intention intention of hitting a million subscribers. And that's all I'm saying. There's a reason why we watch horror movies and it's to be scared witless. And this film will do exactly that. Well there we have it horror fans Alice for the top 5 scariest horror movies that you missed part 3. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you think there's many more where that came from? Why don't you let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. First up Donald Duck says what? I thought that dude was bald. Hey, what can I say man? Hair grows. Hair grows. Also, I was never bald, I just shaved my head. <laughs> Next up, Jeremy Peach, I hope I pronounced that right, says, So, Jack enjoys metal music, what's your favourite band? And I am indeed partial to some metal, as well as being partial to pretty much all genres. In particular though, I'm a fan of Iron Maiden, Slipknot, and I love a British band called Enter Shikari, which is more screamo than metal, but they're awesome still the less, so Enter Shikari are great. Well, on that note, unfortunately that's all we've got time for in today's video, just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top 5 scary videos in particular, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and we'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch, you've been watching top 5 scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.